pretty dive heavy into a Renata, into the Aurelian Sol. Like, you have options to try and play around that to a certain extent and keep yourself safe. So, SK, I think, will be playing more towards, hey, take a very... Yeah, I think it was a bit of a mistake from Vitaly. I think they could have just gone for the reset, spent that gold, but now Niski's here, Ismo's shadowing. Looks us in the same position, though, so... We want to take it a lot of damage. And Chuck Downey might just die before the play even really starts. Shielding coming down from the Eclipse. The rest of SK now descending. Niski fishing for the angle. Flashback pushing Karzi, catching his flash as well. And down goes the carry. A disaster in the bottom lane. Double thumbs up from SK as Vitality lose their ADC. Shouldn't let them dragon as well. Is helpful as actually it's going to be Niski going top. Looks like the cross maps yeah. coming through for SK. Wave reset and now. Top versus bot side, Irrelevant essentially out of mana. Q3 not really going to hit, but it does manage to clip Niski. Irrelevant now going to be in trouble. Photon does a good amount of damage, but there's just too many members. Top side, damage is good. Photon not nearly tanky enough. The Drake will drop. Been able to trade back and get that Drake. Here, SK crossover to the six scrub threshold. Vitality are stronger in early skirmishes on paper, so they want to try and take this fight. Excellent ulti onto Rahel to kick things off. Rahel trapped in the back of the pit. Karzi just gonna continue to walk forward. Good ulti coming in from VTO. Landing onto three, but that dragon is out of mana. He can fly through the air though, and he might not need it. Luan starting to burn, starting to fall down. Vitality might not have gotten the grubs, but they got the fight. Vitality got a huge, oh, actually, might. <laughs> a bit of a new something memory. is gonna miss. I'm gonna get out of there. Big thing I want to keep track of in this game. Oh, hold that. Again, slow on to Rahel. Immediate cleanse comes out, but there's just too much damage. Dragon just runs him down. Lightning from the skies. Vitality trying to coordinate play around the mid lane. They do not want to lose anything on this tower. They know Rahel is out of summoner spells. Handshake coming in delayed, though the lock up on the hill is saying is clutch. The bailout might not be enough. Rahel, so many spears stacking up, and it will finally get taken down. Hostile takeover. Luan running. Isma running, and once again, here comes Vito. Here comes Photon. Split pushing continues to be the answer for SK, but this time it's a... The biggest issue is one that you already talked about is... Handshake there, immediate ulti to follow. Lince is getting oh. lower, but Irrelevant already now in the pit. He is going to use his ulti. Luan coming in, Rahel waiting over the wall. Ulti going down for VTO. Going to find two members locked up. Niski trying to find the angle to push them back in. Flashback does not connect on the dragon, though. Lince is immediately retreating. Two quick kills. The bot lane from Vitality. Dodge away from Sonnet, the Hillisang ult, and set up for a quick pick. So this is definitely where you might be uh, setting up vision More for stacks. us. Stun onto Isma. We'll try to get the ultimate off. So far, the CC layer beautifully. Isma immediately going to heal up a little bit more, courtesy of the Sundered Sky, but should just get dropped down here. Jungle are deleted, and now Vitality want to keep going. Luan running for his life. Rahel lays down a bit more poke. Powered Blast Cone, the Chemtech Blast Cone. Can't take Luan out. He takes his time to make sure the angle is good. Hostile takeover goes completely wide, but Vitality have the setup on Drake. SK Resti Possible skill to interrupt. Uh, an abundance of cooldowns. You've no TP on video. And now though. Niski's getting caught out. Every single side lane really committed to over pushing here on the side of SK. But now perhaps it's Karzi who has been caught out. Luan waiting over the wall. Nice lock up on the solar flare and irrelevant. Turns it right back. The TP from Niski. It's going to be a numbers advantage for SK in the top side of the map. So Niski ends up baiting in Vitality and irrelevant once more. Keeps going. More poke on the hill saying <laughs> dies before he can even use the bailout. Yeah, excuse me, irrelevant's TP in the previous play. And as mentioned previously, Keep your eyes on this Kaisa in his ear because they're going to obliterate this objective. Vitality now desperate to get something back. VTO ultimate is powerful and Irrelevant's taking a decent amount of damage, but SK can just turn off the objective and start the fight. Big chunk of the damage initially, and that's the empowered ultimate from VTO coming in. Niski going to flash backwards. Rahel now stepping up a bit more damage. Photon could isolate the AD carry, but Rahel just flashes over the wall. Eyes on the prize. He deletes the dragon, but it's Photon now trying to turn it back. Not strong enough to kill Irrelevant. Isma on the edge, but will get taken out in the end. Photon, the hero play to stop the Baron from going down. Just about. Isma got the... In terms of gold, they don't have soul to fall back on because SK got the previous Drake. Now looking to lock up Irrelevant and pick him up. Layer the CC perfectly, but no, the Hextech Ultimatum comes in. Pullback coming in for Photon as well. They take down the top laner. Punish SK. Irrelevant thought he was too tanky. He was not. And now Vitality starts the objective. If they secure this, everything swings back in their favor. It's all in the smite. It's all in the execution. SK, are they willing to take the fight at a man disadvantage? Photon zoning, trying to keep the jungler out of the pit. They want to delete Ismo once again. That ultimate doing nothing. Vitality focused on the objective. Clean calls here in the moment. Niski waiting over the wall. Wants to bring it back. Vitality stopped there, Baron. Can SK do the same? Niski off to the side. Unstoppable now, the interrupt coming in for Photon. Pushback is good. Ulti not going to connect on anybody, but Niski's already dead. Vitality can just continue to hit the objective. Vitality should just take the Baron here, but it's taking a damn long time. Four seconds on Irrelevant. He does have the TP up and available. SK, how crazy are they?
Just continue to channel. Objective down. Vitality like that. Swing the gold back in their favor. But it's here. Vitality should just step up and take this. Don't want to overcommit. You can see recalls coming in for VTO now to make sure that he can defend the inhibitor. No TP for Niski. No empowered recall means if Vitality get aggressive here, the Azir will not be involved. Ultimately, SK, though, going to respect it. Will pull back. VTO has to find the angle in the 1v1 to stop Niski from taking this, so I just don't think that he can. Tower goes down, the one stepping forward, Irrelevant still off to the back side. The entire fight split. Isma trying to find the angle, trying to buy a bit more space to continue the pressure from Niski, but it's going to cost him his life. Isma should just die again here. SK delaying, SK stalling, SK buying time, but they give up two just to stop the push from going any further. And in the meantime, Photon is still stepping forward, is still pushing. VTO can TP into this lane. Vitality might just try to go for the throw here. Niski's going to be on the way. The recall finally going to come through, but the TP coming through even faster from VTO. They've already locked up Irrelevant. Hextech Ultimatum not going to buy him any more space. Photon the one to step up again in the clutch. This Cassante has been everything for Vitality. Niski going to whip completely. Vitality, can they afford to go for the end here? Two inhibitors has to be enough. Blinking health bars. But if any team is going to keep pushing, it's Vitality. Rahel wants to make the difference himself, wants to turn it back again. Health bars blinking, but Rahel takes the kill on the Karzi. They barely hold on, but it's a series. Well, League of Legends, they always want to push for more. <laughs> they always want to, you know, go for blood. They don't want to just sit and scale and stall and wait. But again, as long as Vitality don't make a mistake Maybe. here, doesn't matter. Alti's chained beautifully. Niski starting to auto attack his entire team. Have they ever pushed though the pushback? Niski now able to make it out. Pullback from Photon is good. Isma now gonna be in trouble with Irrelevant now following up. Overextension briefly from the side of Vitality. They get nobody in the exchange. 48 seconds on Baron. SK are closer to their base. Though so happy to just test SK, hoping to bait the TP out of Niski, it looks like. Yeah, because then they can start to open up the bot side with having that TP advantage themselves, but they've committed to this now. Recall, Hostile take over over the wall. Isma, he can't get over. The Berserk coming through, they need to finish this one. Photon flashes over, he gets him out of the pit, and down goes the objective, but now it's Irrelevant on the backside. Instantly interrupted, instantly knocked up, instantly pushed back, but Irrelevant still stays standing. Karzi deleted, and in the clutch, in the fight, it is all on Photon. Cassante, one more time, one more copy pasta, but today the words are not not in his favor, a not unstoppable enough. SK take the exchange. Line. And what looked like Vitality finding the win they needed, now may, may be SK taking their spot. For the first time since 2015, SK, so many different names, different faces, different iterations over the years. But they will lock first in the LEC regular season. Linz is the rest of the team powerless to stop them. SK, the best team in the LEC regular season. Not bad for a C-tier team, has to be said. <laughs> <laughs> SK, it was dodgy, it was ropey, it looked bewildering at times. But SK, a well-deserved first place. This team has continued to impress over the course of spring. Impeccable team fights has really been their standout, and thanks to that, they are standing top of the table. Decided vitality. And Nikki has to win. Yeah, Niski laid out the red carpet for you. Yeah, they have to win. Yeah. I know. I saw Mirwin, I saw Super, and they were like, "Thank you, thank you." <laughs> like, but, you're welcome. Uh, now they're thanking us. Yeah. <laughs> there is one team that will get to skip the first round. One team that gets to be the big boss. If MDK win fast enough, they get to be the big boss. If not, it's Vitality. So we'll keep track as we get later in the game. For now, Zolis. Just keep track of that life bar, because it is rapidly disappearing. Supa going in, hitting him with the kick W. Keeping it going. Marcoon now getting lower and lower. I don't think they're going to be able to finish this kill, but MDK playing with a lot of aggression on the bottom side. Will get the flash out as well. Not the start that you want for Rogue. Turns to have when the enemy team, all of their money, all of their lead really is just on that Zeri. MDK setting up around three Krugs. The charge now coming out. Alvaro might be the one in trouble, but a nice three-man stun. An instant turn back on the engage. They're going to start trying to find the resets. If Marcoon goes down, the Sigourney already down. The reset can now come through for Elio. He can pick up the body. He can keep it going. He dodges the hook as well. In the meantime, MDK in the blink of an eye just delete Rogue in the fight. Retreat! That was not how Finn would have liked to start that one off. <laughs> to, to dismount him. To dismount him, right? Yeah. yeah. So it does kind of come a little bit tough. It's kind of rude. Like, you're just beating up on the lizard and then letting the Yordle get away with it over and over again. As Marcoon taking a lot of poke here. Good damage onto Alvaro. That ulti completely whiffing. And the excellent play previously uh, counterbalanced by a bit of a fumble there, a bit of a whiff. This is what we're talking about, you know, MDK, these little mistakes when they have the leads coming back to bite them. Now it's Rogue in that position on towards Rift Herald. It's Rogue who Larson pushing in that top side. And 
MDK or B5, they're stepping in here. Yeah, Supa's still incredibly strong as long as they can lock up Supa, but the ulti already going down and hits El Yoya, however. But immediately, press the charge, pull the trigger, Harold going to drop, quick kill picked up for Rogue. This item. <laughs> well, there's a lot of members of Rogue coming down here. I think Alvaro wasn't Who's quite spotted. Marcoon when I see. TP in from the side of Rogue. Mirwin locked it. They're trying to immediately delete the Renekton, and they're successful. Rogue got what they came for. Now they can just focus down the tower. Finn demounts, but it's the perfect way to drop tower aggro. Rogue, clean pick, and Frescali is still a mile away from that tower on the top side. No TP for Rogue. Not having that luxury because Finn TP to save top lane it means they're going to use this window to group on mid and try and dissuade MDK. Good All Weaver's ball to keep Rift off. But they're just going to go somewhere else. They're just taking their time. He just drifts it. He's ready for this eventuality. Oh, he, missed he misses completely. Oh, oh God. God. No. The ulti goes down. He's now on the back side of the fight. He's laughing in the chat, and Mirwin gives his life. That was bad. That was t everything about that was bad. Look, we're all going to take a breath and we're just going to reset. Look, he, he's just used to riding boards. The bottom side from Mirwin. We're trying to TP in behind. Alti. Trigger pulled on the fight. Frescali waiting over the wall. I think hoping to lay the rocks down or find the angle. All of Rogue hesitant to go in. Alvaro going to try to get the fight off. Mirwin now going to fall. Supa immediately going to all fin trying to isolate that AD carry, but he's already been dismounted and he's about to die. Supa finds the kill in an instant. So far, just the one for one trade. Dragon getting lower. MDK, do they just want to turn back? Super harassing once the ulti fades off. We'll be a little bit weaker. Rogue, is that their time to re-engage? Poke coming through. Mirwin stepping up. Nice wall to get the rest of Rogue away. Flick back, not going to connect. Dragon going to drop, though. About to reset, but MBK got their prize. They're split, though, as they retreat. Rogue, do they want to keep going forward? The flash forward on the press alley. It does not connect. Marcuna again whiffing. Two plays back to back. A little bit rough here. We'll be able to retreat, but MDK again, they get the objective. Ultimately, all that matters. So at least didn't have his ultimate up. It's now available. Pump. Pump, trying to get the poke down. Rogue. Frustration. I feel like Marcoon you can see him retreating on the top side. Laid down a little bit of vision. Have an angle to approach. If MDK get over eager again, the time break point 26:58. Alvaro locked up though. The engage coming in for Rogue, looking to lock him down. He's not going to get pushed. A single button. The follow up there from Zoelis. A great ultimate, but Tupa already retreating. Gets out just barely. Cost him his flash, cost him his barrier. Like now they want to try and turn over towards the barrier, and you still have the TP on Finn to get here. Will be a four versus five. El Yoya the has ulti to too. try and get in here. Semi-global, but he's not going to use it instead. Trying to group with the team. TP from Mirwin, objective getting lower and lower. El Yoya goes into the fog. Finn cannot see him. Instead, Finn being pulled up the wall into Supa. Kind of a bit of the spectator bug there. The Baron gets a bit of health back. El Yoya still hovering around. But this should just go in favor of Rogue. Instead, MDK going to try to settle for the Consolation Prize, but Rogue grabbing the Baron. Excellent pick onto Alvaro, paying off, allowing them to get access to that objective. Yeah, and 40 left on it. 30 seconds till Mountain Soul, however. MDK committing a lot of resources on the top side. Rogue, smartly though, keeping their vision bot lane. They do not want to give up Mountain Soul. Mirwin now locked up, and is just going to get burned down here. Double dash out, but... Will fall. Again, Larson's damage too powerful. Top lane are going to be dead for when that bear are on me. the objective. Uh, yeah, we'll just retreat here. If they'd found Larson, they might have immediately gone for it again. Just deleting that Corky makes this next fight so easy. Otherwise, it's quite tricky. Wall coming in, though. They found the angle. Comp waiting over the wall, but he can't join the fight. It looks like the support taken out. Double TP's now coming in. Oh, you can look for the reset. Pick up the Nautilus body. Look to follow up. Rogue getting pushed back. Flash in. They managed to hook Finn. That's going to be clutch. Finn going to get taken out. He dismounts, but there's just nowhere for him to go. Double kill for MDK. Rogue knew they were on the top side, but they took the risk anyway. Yeah, Finn was pushing in a bot side, so instead of just letting the waves push and potentially trade tier two oh, for tier two. Get on top of him. Flash for the rail. One combo could be the death of comp, but they Good turn on Alvaro. comes in. Alvaro immediately going to get burned down. Now the rest of MDK have to try and recover. Marcoon finds a bit of redemption there as he finds the angle, takes the support out of the equation. Stun on Amir when Larson immediately going to try to fall off the ulti going down, but Supa still standing. But no, the meat grinder rogue. The entire front line immediately on top of him. MDK fumble, get caught out. So much confidence, and they're punished for it. The ult from Marcoon was huge. For the barn as well. I mean, if they want to be aggressive here, Elio is in the area. It is a bit risky, but El Yoya doesn't want to flip it. The rest of Rogue now stepping up to cover just to make sure. If Comp gets involved, they'll shred this, but Larson does so much damage, he might not even need to. Rogue going to grab their second Baron of the game. Further extend their gold lead. Extend that way more if they're hoping to close this one out cleanly. And yeah, buy more time to scale. 
stack up. Marcoon tries to disengage. Wall laid down. They know Comp has no summoner spells. They're going to try to delete him out of the fight before it even kicks off. Comp holding out to safety. Larson now trying to protect. Alvaro going to be knocked up, but that means Supa is free to do whatever he damn well pleases. Olis fighting the kill. Support versus support overall. Now one taken down. The reset. Nautilus body coming through, but there's no objective on the map. They're just slowing the Baron no down. Effect. They try and get another Baron buff gone here. Finn overextending the side lane. All of Rogue now looking to class. Finn trying to flash to safety, but Alvaro is here. Interrupt from Marcoon is big. Finn locked up for an extra moment. He's about to demount. He should just drop. All of Rogue, you can see immediately the call is back away. There's no opportunity here. This Baron buff is honestly. Oh, flash back up and available. Zonya's completed as well. This Kaisa can take over the fight. Similar story on the opposite side, and this time around, so Elise, the one caught out and deleted. Comp nowhere to be found. He doesn't hit the brace. He's gonna CC now coming in, but it's Supa on the back line. Supa in the clutch, the flip back coming through. Finn demounted. Another kill to come in. MDK on the hunt. The wall coming down, looking to tear Rogue out of playoffs. Bring them back for a tiebreaker. The Kaisa could have been crucial, but the Kaisa wasn't. We missed the Baron setup now, but it looks like Rogue were not able to rush it. Now going against the Mountain Soul. Super locked up for a moment, but he manages to make it out over the wall. Now it's Frescali who's in trouble, but the instant re-engage comes in from Alvaro, and it's Larson who's in trouble. Larson who has to run for his life. on the backside. Gonna finish for the goal, gonna finish for the reset, but he's slowly getting taken down. Has to all back out. Rogue retreating beautifully. So Elise already down, but another one going to fall. Marcoon taken out of the equation. It's MDK now with access to the Baron. And this would be the first one, for the one chance they need to end this out. An incredible turn, a back and forth game thus far, but finally. Early game was good. Rogue brought it back, brought it into their control. Got the finish was against Casey, but they threw it all away. A game that was won. This could have been their finish. This could have been no tiebreakers if they had found that win there. They could have been at three wins, but instead, find themselves locked up. Supa needs to backstep. Rogue starting to poke. Mirwin now in trouble, but the tower already down. Supa unafraid with the Nautilus ult out of the equation. He knows he's untouchable. Mirwin goes top. MDK just needs to back away. Marcoon and Finn are the only engaged tools, and Larson's on the flank. Hook goes oh, wide! from Finn, the hook goes wide. Larson on the side, wants to get something back. Finn demounted, they have to retreat now. This next wave, MDK continue to push. They can set their sights. Top lane tower, top inhibitor. Finish it out clean. There's no follow-up from Rogue, though. They're trying to throw everything in, but Larson's not getting the damage down. Comp's not getting the damage down, and MDK, in four versus five scenarios, are getting to squirm their way out of it and get inhibitors. Rogue, need to find the angle. So they can't find it here. A few minutes. Here, one keeping the pressure on. Zoelis hits the hook, but only on to Alvaro. Elio following. Supa still untouched. Supers crashing on that tower. Hope starting to bloom for MDK. Oh, this is one of three that they will need. They're keeping forward. The pushback is there. Rogue falling to pieces in the final moments. MDK do not hesitate to start the fight. The Nexus, all that matters. Finn tries to turn it around with the charge. Finn tries to get anything done, but Larson doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of mana. Marcoon already down. Everything crumbling for Rogue. MDK keep their dreams alive. They keep Vitality alive. They get the tiebreaker, and they will see Rogue one more time at the end of today. Triple for Elio to end. MDK stay standing. MDK wiped the sweat off their brows at the end of that one. But the job has only just begun. Two tiebreakers left to play. And you can see the faces on Rogue. They had us at so many opportunities in that game. But MDK refused to give up. Definitely did. At LEC on X, player of the game, El Yoyo for Scowie Supa. It's not the only time you'll get a chance to vote. I'm thinking about the Renata for Jun, right? We haven't actually seen it from him this split, but. I know, Hysterics, you're a massive fan <laughs> of this man. gave Renata. it away. <laughs> but uh, you think back to Emperor's performance yesterday, where he things does. didn't quite go the way that Thanks he wanted to. Real. Fnatic looking to try and cement themselves at the top of the table. AD carry mid, does it count on oh. the Corky under turret? Maybe it does under oh, turret! No. Oh no! Medius, why did you talk? I can't, I'm turning you off. A... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got solo killed again! Two yeah. days now. Oh dear. PDS. Oh, and it doesn't stop there, does it? Razzle caught out. He flashes the broad matches, the trample, the auto attack, the kill secured. Oscar in and now up against the wall, thinking about what he can do to bring Fnatic back with some aggression in their early game. But Adam's over the wall. He can't be slowed, as you see on your screen. And Fnatic have just made double whoopsie. That was a complete disaster for Fnatic. It may not stop, though, because oh, Labrov's no. still here. I mean, and the damage early out of the Skana can't be undermined. I mean, Ghost is there. 
Oscar's not going to pop it. He holds his ground. But meanwhile, on the bottom side, Ice is going to get Zenith Blade in. Cleanses out, flashes out. Double summoner. Oh, is loses his life. Now Razork feeling confident. Doesn't expect Adam to collapse. We've got to get back into live. Well, we get for Zenith Blade again. Ice is in trouble and with no summoners. That's just such an easy kill. Great punish. And this time, Fnatic hitting where it hurts. And look at the wave that's denied. A yeah, much needed win for Fnatic. And part of the world and with the long sword as well 600 gold lead you mentioned is what Fnatic are trying to push for with more blading in the top side yeah bds though they're going further aren't they the shock out ice just runs away lebrov sacrifices his life no with a second kill echo that point again that's a couple of times now we've seen whoopsies from lebrov in the early stages and yeah. has cost bds tries to stop the reset but Fnatic are in the area now going to take over top side flash this is disrespectful razork thinking he'd take this didn't know where shale was that's a freebie while he's trying to take an enemy blue. And that will set up them for Ice to cover this top side. The play. dragon spawns in eight seconds. I thought they were actually going to throw a reset in, but now they're all collapsing mid. Okay. So oh, they, oh, oh, it can end. Oh, they got him. Oh, in, and that was perfect. Noah gets out. He uses barrier. He uses flash, but wow, BDS, it looked too far. The rocket is trying to go offside, but well, unfortunately. And reclaim that space, but first the mid wave is the priority. Yeah, that's where. Fnatic actually kind of get onto the brawl here. the root caller as well. Jun has to flash away. He regrets it. Ice just steps on up, gets some damage down. Now asking if BDS are going to continue the fight right now might be as obvious as Oscar Inning gets flipped on out. Jun finds a new target into the Scorpion King. But Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Solar Flare through the wall, gets targeted out. He's stuck there for years. No impale, but a great seismic shove. A triple knockup might bring it back. But for BDS, there's no reset yet. Jun even getting a follow-up engagement that BDS have to kite back to their turret. And man, Fnatic locked Adam into the wall. We need to call Riot Games. Adam thought he got out. you guys want to talk about? <laughs> well, right now I want to talk about the dragon spawning in about a minute and a half. Good one. But right now, again, the contest around the Baron is primarily focused about the fact that it's this dance of vision. You know, you were talking about the... Oh, solo play. Okay, it starts off a little bit earlier, doesn't it? The suppression's there as well. I think that's the root. Adam once again stuck in place. He gets Cassante ulted, but that's too far for Oscar Rinnan. Under turret ends up being a trade with the seismic shove on the left of your screen. Was the clutch play that gives a reset and sets up Shao for success. A root caller, another heartbreaker, and oh, this that's guy's the playmaker! BDS's mid lane is going nuclear again! This time, BDS had the damage that they needed. Just bring a tower into the mix. Well, Adam not. dragging Oscar underneath that mid lane tier one, getting rid of that initial front line, allowed them to chase their opposition down. BDS with a huge team fight win now puts Fnatic on the back foot. And it's exactly what we talked about in draft. Once you get one kill, BDS come alive. Shale with the resets, Ice with the resets, and now Baron in their sights. BDS taking firm control of this game against Fnatic. How good has Duke been this game? I mean, I'm just watching that playback and I'm excited for the replay because, bro, this to totally added to the repertoire. And now Fnatic kind of to see if they can fi find a moment to sing off the same hymn sheet because in position now for Dragon, good choke points that BDS can't really encroach through. He makes number six, doesn't it? Dragon still getting whittled down slowly but surely for Fnatic to deny that top one against Solar Player. Engage is there, Impale is there, and also a rocket, but another shove! They're all multi man nuke, stop it! Check his PC, get him off Talia, because Fnatic can't handle it. Off on the side, Noah still hitting the Dragon though, and onto Razor. I mean, BDS need to get on back, they may have gotten the kills, but the Dragon is also important and running forward. They now know it's taken by Fnatic, but in the pit with no way out, and Ice getting excited. Fnatic up against the wall, and BDS looking like the second best team in the LEC. I damn think so. And Shao still chasing down Humanoid. He's got nowhere to go. He goes over the Unraveled Earth and gets taken down. And that's deja vu. We saw it at level three, and we'll see it again right before our eyes as BDS looked to take it home. It's another clean ace, and maybe even the game. Those respawn timers, it's 40 seconds for Humanoid. This guy is insane. This team is looking more insane. It's not just this week, folks, but watch through BDS. They're looking at an 8-1 finish, and sure, SK hold on to first, but in a clear second, in clear momentum, and in clear driving force towards Summer, and as well as Worlds, BDS are looking on fire. It's time we start to look at BDS, see that they are standing and accounting for themselves in the LEC. They were one headbutt pulverize away by Luan from being undefeated in the LEC. And now they are rolling into playoffs, an absolute monster. I mean, BDS are just 
they're a very clean team. Uh, a single fight was the arguably the only mistake they made this game. Yeah. Nuke had an incredible Talia performance. Shale, we didn't really get to sing his praises as much. Like, it's G2. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's G2, never mind. What? Okay, so okay. you were saying Warmogs are strong. Yeah. I mean, Mundo gets that straight up, like, I don't know, second item, third item, normally a heart steal. It's weird, I don't know. It's big. What do you think it's Fire, by the way? I mean, coming in, you know, he's been a bit of an upside, he's been he a bit might die. back and forth. Well, <laughs> is it the wrong time to ask? <laughs> Maybe uh, okay. not. Yikes looking for the steal. He stole it. He stole it. He got level Wait, six. Yank is still level four. Yeah, yeah okay. Does Yank get flash? He does. There's the ulti. Yankos gets burned out Whoa. by the plants are there. Mickey comes in for a hook. Mid is a disaster. Is if you're it, playing yeah, this right now, you say, get me out. <laughs> First blood from Mickey who flashes in for it. Trimby has to stand there and watch. So, I mean, we're seeing all of the consequences of all yeah, the training yeah. that's happening in mid, right? What was that word? Uh, disaster? Yeah, <laughs> disaster. It's, it's a disaster. disaster. I mean, <laughs> Mickey, okay. well, often we see a lot of plays on the map in League revolve around who has pressure in mid, yeah. right? So now because the pressure, oh, yeah. Yike is now getting collapsed on. Yike is dead. He had no splash from before. That's good for Flackers. That's, that's a good uh, temporary by yeah. the Heretics. Is anyone else dead? That's my question. Hunt on the six, but they go for the all in. Hunt on the flashes under turret. That's a double turret shot. Trimby might die. Ace in the hole is available. Oh, the but they're going to block this either way. Good damage from Hunt Summer. Okay. Caitlyn no sums. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're a bit relieved. She should be more scared to fight now. But they really need to find a way to stop Corky. Uh, I, I mean, think... Trimby is six, though. Yeah. Oh, oh that's a good Magnus Storm in melee. The damage might be enough to get a tray, but at the end of the day, Han Summer hasn't autoed yet, and Han Mickey can't finish it off either. Look, Spyro's in here just in case he won't get a kill or an assist, but a double for Team Heretic's bottom lane. Just dominating through the lane, or now that Flackett has kills, what do you think about the state of the game? Hang on, he can. Talk to can us he? about this play. Well, maybe he can, because Caps has to go Valkyrie, run away. He's still alive for the time dead. being. Rel locks it through. You might be right about that. The Zyra ulti does nothing. Caps dying here. That's huge. Now what do you think? Gamebreaker. Her Heretics <laughs> Game win. Breaker. Heretics yeah, win. Heretics it's win. It's huge, it's huge. So it's a disaster for G2? A disaster. Okay. Disaster. Okay. was the only so hope. Much. Excellent Beam insight in from Nuke. We have to bring him back into the Caps in the future. Uh, all right, let's Hit see if it's robbery. a disaster for Flackett. Let's find out. Well, under turret, they might get some of the gold back. Mickey's tanking it, but Flackett almost gets a return. Hans dies because of it. It's a shutdown, but it was a messy one from G2. Uh, I mean, Hans Summer doesn't have the flash. He can't get out of it. Maximum because Dosage. they just can't do anything. No. You know, it's just tank v tank. I feel like this Mundo is just going to have a completely free time, right? Yep. Meanwhile, no free time for G2 oh. in the top lane because Shrimpy's gotten the engage, but the Stranglethorns are out. And guess what? Flackett ran into it. He has to flash away with Barry already there, and Mickey takes a chance to death charge him, and oh. Caps blows him up. Big mistake from Team Heretics AD Carry, who was the life of this comp, and G2 just snatch him away. They try to force it. Playing for the next objective. Look at this position here. Yike and Mickey. It's impressive, isn't it? I mean, they're going to get caught out Tempest by Trimby. Flackett's ult there. The Stranglethorns again buys them the space that they need, though, but all on end. Spyro is here, and Mickey just gets taken down. So in the end, a Team Heretics win, and it's nice to see them being so Previously, bright. And Heretics find themselves a kill. Of course, that kill's not really going to amount to a huge amount. Broken Blade gets the push in bot. Caps is just continuing to farm. Something we see often. Oh, remember that Under. passive was down. No go where he pleases, so he doesn't get CC chain locked as Yike is here to help on out. Stranglethorns is there. He's got the maximum dosage. The biceps are out. He flashes away, doesn't get CC. Slows Yankos on the return, but a permafrost and a flip back means he dies anyway. Broken Blade watches from the rear. Oh, Team the target that they were aiming for, but they make it work. Oh, this is part two. The problem is that Caps just keeps farming. Wait. And some, and Mickey, are they now caught out? I don't know. This has been a game. Depth charges there. I wonder what Nuke would say about this. As Flackard gets slowed on down, but only for a second. Hans booped on back. And what is going on? I don't know. G2. I just. They're just caught again. They just keep getting caught. Like Mickey even tried to initiate on the Baron. Baron spawn. What, what the hell? Heretics right, are going to do a 20-minute Baron against G2. 20 seconds until Hans is alive. Do you think Caps can one before? No, I do thank not. You, thank you, Vettius. There's the crash down. He flashes away under turret. He's trying. He gets locked down, and he's dead. That answers that question. Yankos snipes his former mid lane. Matchup. The Baron? I've got to shut up because the Baron's being started. I mean, how quickly, though? They need Flackett on it as he moves. G2 are going to move with it as well. They get mid push, and 
You remember that Wonders down here, either way, he's got TP. He gets solo turrets. are already a win if they pull off, but they're staying on it at 5. 4k it's now. Melting. TP comes through. Trimby just sways them over the wall. There's no steal. Team Heretics pull it off, but now Trimby's going to die, and this Mundo's got another job to do. He runs on in, gives it over to Caps, and... Baron for two kills. I mean, I think that's kind of worth it. Yeah. Oh, but we're not about to find out. Well. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, Heretics are moving into <laughs> the top side of the jungle. They're looking for a fight. And it's a pick on the caps. They crash down. They full commit. Caps even flashes. They're all in, but they need to kill him. Where is the damage? It finally comes through as Mickey dies with him. They complained for long enough that the Stranglethorns came out, but now wait, Trimby jumps back in. That blast cone was mega troll, and even with the ulti coming out, I still wonder because the problem is those health bars are too damn low. BB can't die, Yankos runs it in, more stacks! Han survived! I mean, Heretics are the one that wanted that, but they lost more people! Han Summer is now on a killing spree, G2 what? ended up winning. Broken Blade just got level 18. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh my god, one to 16. And as he runs into the whole Team Heretics lineup, takes some poke now. He ain't that tanky, he's just got a lot of health. He's getting whittled down himself. One to try to oh. flip, and there it is. Dreadline starts to stop. Meanwhile, Caps is soloing Trimby. Oh. There's no engage there, and G2 are now running the Doctor in. The service is cheap, but surely Team Heretics go to a better specialist. G2 running forward, and they're winning the fight after fight, and Caps. Cleaned out Trimby on the side, joined in, and no one of them died. The Zyra ultimate in mid lane was massive once again. The initiation coming out from Mickey lands the ultimate onto the back line. And as you rightly said, while all of that was happening, Caps just killing the engage of Actually, has a lot going on. 259, I'm still keeping track. It's Baron on the top side, gets the push in, Broken Blades mid. Bot is nowhere near that inner turret, and Trimby's gonna try. In the meanwhile, the Glacier Prison doesn't connect from Yankos, and he sends it out all the same. Trimby's ult comes in late, and he dies. Now, here he comes again, running forward into Yankos. He still takes a mighty tag, as that Zara ulti was a flash from Yike, and it sets up to burn, turn, and make Team Heretics learn that G2 will always find a way back into the game. It is a disaster for Heretics, nice with the Baron so. buff. They break open the top inhibitor. They take out Trimby, and G2 is looking to end the game. Look at him once again as he charges on in for Team Heretics. It looked good with some of their picks, but I mean, G2 felt like they were playing a very strange game, but all the same, <laughs> playing with their food a little bit at times. Now, Mickey oh. is going to run it for one last time, it seems, as G2 now have to back Thank away. Trimby and Yankos going to be face checking. Oh, oh the TP. Caps, I don't think he knows. No, he doesn't. I mean, he's already gone over the wall with the blast cone. Valkyrie gives him space. Oh. The ult is out of range. Broken Blade's taking on three people while they now flash onto Caps. What? But where did Hill fuck go? <laughs> That's blood force head drama. The police have been called. The medical staff have been called. But Broken Blade can't be detained. He's healing it all back up. <laughs> he's full of health. This Mondo is literally the embodiment of all top laners in League of Legends. Broken Blade, he's showing us how damn broken he is at the end of the split, and as Trimby hovers on the side, he's gonna heal up the full again and run it down. This is the chaos that the LEC thrives in. G2 get TP'd on by Heretics. He's full Mickey's again. back, Broken Blade once more. <laughs> he's just running it, at least Yankos has himself the Warmogs as well. Mickey's, Mickey's gonna just going to die. die. He he <laughs> I mean, mid's pushing in top as well. That's the only thing I can say. We're going to try and run on Broken Blade, but we all know how that ends. I mean, Broken Blade's just going to chase him down. Look, Oh, look at the base. Look oh, at the base. They're running in. I mean, look, the minions are going to win them the game. Yike, that's a perfect position as well. Is his ulti up? We're not too far from it, I think, but Broken Blade is there chasing them Caps down. Caps TP. Black is there. Caps is indeed DP'd. What a way for G2 to end the, the season. They're third. Yes, but oh. this damn oh. Caps <laughs> dies at the end. They're still on my I mean, can't. Yeah, pushed in by the super, min super minions. Top as well. He Still knows. Stone to stack. Caps knows. The shield's there to delay him, but Caps Trimby's knows again. Chunked. The ultimate comes through from Caitlyn, running through. Mickey is just going to die first, isn't he? Heart Steel is good against Wonder, moves him to half HP, but the Zyra ult is better. Yike has them right where he wants them as they line it down. Now Broken Blade may be too far forward as his healing is reduced. Remember, Flack yeah. and... He's at 7,315 go, HP right now. It's going to be a long night, Vettius. It's going to be a long <laughs> night. 6k, we are flipping.
but remember it's no flip because Yankos is not nearby. Oh, that was a headshot. That wasn't. But there he is! He is. There he is. He's listening. Yeah. He's on the Nexus. He's got Blood Force. Oh, oh the inevitable! Oh. Wait, but does, he's not taking any damage. No, he's not. He could probably curl around this for a little bit. Flacket running into him. Maybe not the move. Flacket run! The hard steel stack there. Flacket run! At least getting the ulti out. That's something, right, guys? That's something. Is he, he going to die? Around, they got him! Back, and he dies! Inhibitor saves their life! It's crazy. Uh, walk into the inhibitor. There's no rush here, is there? G2. There we go. Mickey's like, let's just get this. Oh! They find a pick. The damage insane. Trimby now needs to come in, but there's no damage left. Wonder sits there, tanks it up for a double. Now, finally, G2 might put this down. I mean, the headshot from Han Summer is lethal. Wonder doing what he can. Watch the window clap. Watch it. Boom. <laughs> He's dead. All right. In the base now as Trimby finally gets that engage. G2 have found their season end. It was long, it was strange. G2, they're already going as our third seed in the playoffs, but man, in style, I think you all can say. They will secure, I mean, they already secured <laughs> third place. They'll secure it again after the defeat against Heretics. I mean, it was a crazy game. We had 41 kills in 41 minutes. It, we went to 83k gold on one side, 75 on the other, an absolute bloodbath, also showing us the Mundo. Again, this isn't going to impact the standings a huge amount. Overall, a great game for both teams. For the, maybe it's Poppy or Sejuani, you don't really know yet. Uh, maybe depending on what they pick, they're going to decide bit, what yeah. they put jungle, right? Uh, because Poppy for a trade, they, 13 CS Silas. Oh, still going for the blue buff. No one wants to give this up. Looks like the, whoever wins gets this blue buff wins the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there is here. Can he surf the wall? He's surfing the wall. No flash on Sajwani. Can they get Sajwani? Sajwani's queuing away. No flash. He used the flash to block no the flash. Buy. Oh my god. Can they get him? Sorry they flash. can get him. Oh my yeah, god. And that's the first blood for K Corp. And they just told me that you both have to go because you have obligations. Wait, oh, I told him in 10 minutes. Yeah. Engage. Falls to pieces. But a clean peel there from KC. Very true. They, Vladdy uses the ultimate. Targums with a good knock up. Keeps the mid laner safe, even though he doesn't have flash available. Uh, he Ooh, might Kana. be dead. I mean, flash match. Ooh. Dominus AoE. Solo kill from Kana. I mean, this guy has been a disappointment for me. Not today, it seems. As quickness with the movement speed gets on out. Targus is there. Give it back, he says, with the cease and desist. Jackie's flash is over. He's met with close up. And KC in multiple lanes are dealing with this pressure nicely. It's been an awkward situation as Upset pushes in mid. He can now regroup with his team. One grubs goes in favor of GX. Remember that KC only really needs one. Mm. It's a closer. He can't really get in range. Targamus has his ult. He has flash, but he doesn't want to pull the trigger yet. Kana's there with the stun. He gets body popped. KC make a move. I mean, this guy, Dominus now popped, but as Grubs go down, it is Vladdy to strike first, but it is a trade so far. It's a quickness. The Emperor's divide. Oh. I mean, KC took a while. There's the return, but Jackie's is in the thick of it with a perma frost Sejuani. And Patrick getting resets. Undecisive, indecisive. Let's lose English properly. Because Giant X took advantage of KC in that fight. Kind of executed it. True. Ultimately, one team fight for Giant X. It is big, as you said, deny the grubs. Now, now look for the dive here on Kana. That's a flash, oh. that's a full commit. Crash down as well. Remember, Permafrost with double melee under turret. Kana will not be able to move. Jackie's just oh. going to die, though. It's not the cleanest dive, and it surely is not going to be well remembered, at least from the side of Giant X, who want to wish to forget. Closer picks that up. Unfortunately, they just didn't have the damage, it seems. Kana is strong still, just because they have the Azir and the Zeri. Renekton, well, you know, you can argue falls off, that's true. You're playing into a Silas. Ooh. This is all in. Wait, Targum jumping back in. There's a quickness as well. He's got that flash available if he wants to reach Patrick, but they look for the disengages upset. Re-engages now for closer, getting caught on out. Jackie's a great pick in return. Vladdy's ult isn't too bad, and it sets up for upset to spike the ball down. Juhan and Igna almost die in the back of practice. I don't think there is an English word for it. Stale. I no, don't that's think that's it. fair. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, Giant X have been trying to go in, but the fights have always been ending badly, really. And we speak of a pick again, upset ulties. Juhan is caught out. He's got no flash. He's going to be able to queue away, but the follow-up is still there. And upset just cleanses through and follows again. Ignar now running away as the zap saves his life, but he also has to flash. I mean, uh, a lot of question marks there as Giant X to just go on top. They're like, hey, forget the Baron. We'll just give Ocean Soul over, and we're going to try and flip the game for Baron. Kana's here as well, by the way. But Close is going to start heading on up. The Azir can take it. He's got TP. Close is far away. I mean, 
It does feel like this could be a bad team fight, though. The Poppy ult is out. It needs to hit someone. It's aiming for upset, but Antonio puts it on cooldown for the time being as Kana flashes on in, gets a stun. The smite is not there until Giant X eventually finds Juhan with it, but you can see KC, they clean up everything else. Two members already dead. Ignar flashing away. He will be the third. He's thinking about going over. Kana stops the back. Ignar, there he is. And at the cost of Baron, losing three members, I mean, Casey will have the run of the map. Tug, oh, sorry, yeah, I mean, Ignar's gonna do what he can to try and get away his Targamas and kind of chase him down. I don't know if, I mean, like, the idea, very good from Giant X, right? You find yourself at a deficit, you need to make a drastic play, you see that the Dragon is being started, the soul, you try and trade it for Baron. Unfortunately, the fight really doesn't go your way, and, uh, Jackie's, oh, no. oh, Jackie's. Quickness comes through. Maybe it's okay, actually. On to Upset. Even with Ocean Soul, Jackie's gets close, but Upset flushing away with the cleanse as well. Thinks about round number two. Abscond of Duck is there. Chain Latch as well. Wait, Jackie's gets in front of the queue. Closer is stunned up, and I'd be stunned too with Jackie's taking that into his own. Definitely caught K KC off guard with that play. Control over the top side in favor of Giant X. Targivus needs to be careful here. Crash down there, ignites down, Pugmas caught out Steadfast against presence. the wall. Wow, Antonio, that was clean. And now they're going to get objective bounty through mid. KC don't have this game in the palm of their hand yet. With Baron, they're going to get double turret. That is a big mistake, a big pick. I don't think this one's done, Betty. I mean, Patrick is still strong. Don't he get is. me wrong, upset has the lead over him, but no. you look at those items. They're going to get a third turret. They're looking for it. That's Probably a lot of bounty there. gold. The cannon is still debuffing it. Objective bounties aren't going to despawn. Remember, there's a timer on them. So all that gold given over, it's now only a 2k gold lead. Yes, they have the Ocean Soul, but Elder changes games. And that is the most proactive Baron on two people I've ever seen. I mean, you have to look at the bottom of your screen. The difference between Upset and Patrick is going to rapidly decline. Mm -hmm. The Antonio, I think he's overstaying. Is he? Well, there's a cease and desist. He is indeed, you're right. The man who sets up the play is the one that falls in the end. Giant X have to leave lucky. No objective is up. But it depends on how much else they lose this game. Patrick hesitant to step up. Knows that Khan is in front of him. Waits for his team. And there we go, ulti. Special prisoner sets it up. The crash down as well. Closer flashes away. You can see upset now starts spacing. Though the quickness on the back line from Tarkman. Uses the flash to get it done. Patrick, now it's a space too. But he's got no one to support him. Jackies can't get back on in. And KC return to a winning team fight. Khan and TP's mid to get that wave going. And Giant X, I think you've run out of bullets. The target selection from KC was perfect. But Targamas with a nice dive onto him with a follow-up coming out from Kana and Closer was Whoa. too much for him to handle. And KC should be able to close this one out. I mean, I can't believe a team that struggled to get into playoffs that's stuck at two and seven throughout this year in winter and spring. We now look down the barrel for their fourth win. They've broken that chain. They've changed things up. A great ulti from Jackie's on the return, but the Nexus is still there. And KC have just done it better in this time. Giant X sent against the wall, and KC, you've returned to fame, and you start in the LEC. Welcome to Playoffs in Form, and welcome to your chance in summer. Four wins for KC. We'll put them at their best performance of the year. The changes have ended up paying off for KC, as they will secure fifth seed in Playoffs. Definitely a turnaround split for, oh, yeah. for the organization. This is big. And there's likely going to be a lot of things they're still frustrated with after how the regular season has gone, but they will have... Leona, but maybe you don't like that if you already have Rumble in your team and Maokai, right? A lot of cleanse bugs value. Uh, on the other hand, Blitz is pretty decent against uh, with Maokai because the guy who has to tank the Maokai ulti will always... be vibing for a while as well. <laughs> True, we that, have you know. been. I remember, remember when Dracos was here? I do. Yeah, that was it wasn't crazy. that long ago. <laughs> it was ages ago. Well, we might get a fight here. Twisted Event follows over the wall. Hang on. Mewin's in a bit of trouble. Finn looks to follow it up. He's burning down, but he overheats. The shove back won't save the life. He gets first blood, but it's a trade. Frescaui gets a one for one in the end. In fact, Mewin also dropped down. Based so on whether you won previous splits, aka G2, uh, and of course, championship points. And you know, we're talking about that for Mad. As we get a bit of a gank up here, let's pause because Finn could be in trouble. We use Flash. In the previous engage to kill Mew, and he's going to run into this to try and 1v2, but that's all he can do. Even overheating the damage is great, but it's not enough. There was no escape and a 1 for 2 start. Yeah.
I mean, old Chemtech style we love. <laughs> no one loved that. <laughs> World Cup holding. Let's find out what happens in the 2v2. His super flashes over. Cop repositions. So he's get that rocket fist up. The cleanse is there, but the 2v2 of MDK is helping to decide what top gets the solo killer, looks like, with the help of an old tree. Cop spacing this out so nicely, but eventually, super steps up. So he's now with another knock up oh. there, but he just explodes him. The static field came out of left field. I mean, so well, he's I need to ask you, how old are you? <laughs> Irrelevant. Uh, oh, no, not in this game yet. We'll find out as he engages there from Marco and Twisted Advance. Rogue are now going to use that poke from Comp, but the quickness from Alvaro, the Weaver's wall as well. Zones them off, Comp is out of the side, but Mirwin's now here. Up against the wall, it's a disaster. Rogue are getting hit from two different angles. Mirwin's TP is everything. And once again, MDK's bottom lane. Two seconds. Finn has made his way down. TP is available for Mirwin. And Rogue have control over the mid wave, but MDK have contr control over the river. And now you've got to fight your. Whoa, oh, Marku! Okay, did he want to do that? I mean, he does maybe now. So Ellis is running in, but the quickness on the back end. Rogue are split apart. Finn's ulti brings it back, but now the Zoelis is dead. Here's Mirwin. Oh! A man impale! Sends him up on the wall. Separated though, Mirwin once again doesn't have his team. It's like saying the same thing about two different units. Rogue get one back. Both junglers still alive. It's support for top. Dragons at a standstill. I mean, I feel like the HP bars for MDK are much lower though. The reap in these situations before. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? And he says it really changes on the team environment, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he won the tiebreaker versus Rogue in spring, right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. The equalizer's down. Finn is caught out though. The flash burn before comes back to bite him in the ass. And now for me, when running forward, Rogue under turret, not safe. Even he has to flash too. The Skarner taking no damage, and the turret eventually that was pitted to go before finally falls. And this is the big difference. Take a breather. One for me. One That's for you. a reminder. <laughs> Thank you for counting. Uh, but we got to get back into the Mirwin. action, Mirwin. Can the he get wall. through the wall? There's the engage, impale out. Now, he can't get through the wall, but he can flash over it. Oh, oh, back in! All right. Now, that was just an overstep from Mirwin. That was. And Rogue were ready to punish. Nice rumble ultimate to clear out the wave, meaning this tower shouldn't fall. Right. Mirwin takes a tower shot. Can someone this mid-wave in to pressure yet another power point against Rogue? Waves being caught as MDK continue to push the lead that they have. Extending their vision ever deeper. Lightning Sharp oh. missed the engage. I mean, the difference is there, but hooking in a Rakan lane and in the quickness, and he's out of them. TP through mid now. I mean, they've drawn in Finn. Kai is gone, and Baron is up for grabs, but they're not going to start it. They're looking for more picks. They get the flash out from Larson. I mean, Super might be in trouble. It depends. There's the equalizer. All they needed a hook. Who's Super flashes? Here comes the Skarner re engage. Impale is beautiful. It turns into a great play because Rogue were faded in. Finn will go golden, but Doyle is going to die on the back end. Well, that gives a reset to Frescawi to start hopping over. Finn, thanks to Cloud Soul, but Skana does too. He might be slowed down, he might be hit up, and eventually it comes to reality. MDK are moving closer and closer towards the date with Vitality. MDK play for the, the kill. Top side. They're waiting for the overstep to come out from Rogue. Marcoon maybe caught out again, has the he flash. Is. I mean, Rogue, what's going on? At death's door. That has to be the Baron. That's jungle that gone. Is. And that might be the end of Rogue's year. A oh, Baron. Months. Up for the taking from Mad Lions. Such a long time, and Mad are just taking it from them. It's like watching that movie with Justin Timberlake. Ever closer to the neck of Rogue as the Mad Lions coy feel the victory Last, within so reach. Larson is trying to trade something back. Base will now come through from Alioi. The inhibitor is secured. Hook. Close. At least getting something. I mean, hey, as a trade, when you're going up against Baron, Larson. Oh. Yawn. Okay. Well, no, Mew and Alter. Yeah, I know, I did. I saw that. <laughs> but he, the Teemo emote interested me a little bit more. I'm going to look for that timer. Whoa, whoa, it's whoa. quite a bit off. Hang whoa. on. Yeah, mad. Might have been caught on out. Seismic shove and a flash away. You can see the range starts coming through. So Larson gets poked out. But Finn is burning him alive. Until Alvaro runs on in and super rolls him down. But into Zoelis. Is it a mistake? No. Rogue thought they could win until Finn goes golden. And now it's all coming apart. One last moment for Rogue. They tried. They found an opening. But MDK was still too damn strong. So close. But it was not enough. MDK will wipe Rogue off the map. They will wipe them out of the LEC. 
and they're looking to keep their playoff hopes alive. We give the 07, we give the salute to Rogue. They got a while before we see them again, but for Matt, one last chance, one roll up the playoffs. Now it's only Vitality that stand in their way. It's been a difficult season for Mad, but one more game will put them into playoffs. Vitality is lying in wait, and they had a very solid game from start to finish. They played proactively. They weren't over-aggressive. Yep. They played around the Baron well. They need to maintain that form, and that's going to be tough. Facilitators were... No matter what you pick right now, this comp is set to be good. And but if they lock in Corky, this is an amazing team comp for Vitality. This is what I wanted to see from is them. It's an amazing team split. comp versus a lot of mobility and... Rightly said a little bit before that. Early I mean, game teams. These bot lanes are very aggressive. And Super and Alvaro fighting for the push. Ooh. Oh, watch your name, Alvaro. Double shattering strike as well. Kazi's ignited. One hit away. He's igniting down, but the potion's enough. Man, that's a close. The call. star players in many different splits have been coming from the bottom side. Kazi's one, Super's the other. I even remember Alvaro on top of that list. You know, with parts of being hilly as Video actually caught out typing shove through mid. Wait, no, what's going on? Video, that's a disaster too. First blood this time and Vitality through bot and now mid. Semi, semi global, right? Like they can start moving around the map. Now they have their level six as well. So oh, yeah, it's mid, wait, that's a gold card in another lane. Surely not, he doesn't have the heartbreaker, but Mirwin now turns his attention. The Destiny gonna be used. A gold card at the ready. It's burnt down. Mirwin can now Destiny into the bush. He gets an advance, but there's the Weaver's Wall. The seismic shove back. Spain is roaring in the early game. And Vitality getting overblown as Photon tries to cook him. But I simmers the fire as Kazi in the 1v1 versus Super. There's a level advantage. A zap avoided. And now the junglers both make their way bot. Both level six. Here we go. Alvaro face checking. Linsus is in there first. But remember, this is a rail going to take a while to die. Shattering strike. But trade, first of all. No, he's taken way too long. Linsus now getting auto attack. But El Yoya doesn't have the damage yet. He heartbreakers away. And Vitality might have a chance. A dredge line in. A root down. But a re engage. Alvaro gives it over to Super. But he must get out of there. Jinx is already getting excited. Kazi zaps away. And we'll get more resources. El Yoya escapes. A death rocket. Oh. Until he doesn't. A third kill for Kazi, and like that, Vitality are reignited. But he gets the shield off just in time. Destiny, we're back into it. It's action all o'clock, isn't it? We run forward and press Gowie, the great seismic shove back. He's been good today, but Photon must be better. He flashes out. Objective that means so much. I mean, MDK have the gold lead, but depends how they get that first reset as they look for Alvaro to start the engage. The Weaver's Wall is there. They're in a choke destiny as well. Kazi separated from the pack and Hilly gives it over to them. It's a one-for-one -one trade, but with a dredge line in, on a Viego, you have to run. Heartbreaker in, Mirwin threatening again with a gold card, maybe at the ready. Video's already out. I mean, that's just the fight for the Herald and the Herald now stands there. I mean, El Yoya getting a, a dredge line in just seems like an absolute Fear point as MDK now threatened topside. I mean, Mirwin's moving into position. No destiny available, but Hilly might be caught out. Now's not the time. Hilly, he can't hit the blast cone. Super hits in midair. MDK well played the control ward on the blast. Mirwin and Alioya are keeping their eyes on this Jinx. Hilly will have a target in mind. Alvaro, there's an engage. They've just walked into River. The setup is so easy from MDK. Linzus drops first. There's the reset here for Alioya. And Vitality walking where they have no business. I mean, they knew they were all bot fetties. Dredge line comes through, at least maybe trying to get something for Kazi, but Meteo runs into a gold card. Vitality, the nerve is showing. I mean, caught completely off guard. The engage from MDK is so swift. The HP is relatively low. Photon is now here, doesn't have not the good. ultimate. They're not going to convert it into anything. MDK riding that momentum. Hook connects onto El Yoya. I mean, it's a start, but no one's nearby. El Yoya looking to turn it around because Alvaro's now in. Super joins the phrase. Well, Destiny to remember. Semi-globals mean they can turn on an instant here. In a choke, a seismic shove. Gives another reset to El Yoya with a dredge line out. It's a little bit shallow. Photon. Missed Fade Ultimate. Get full information as to what Vitality is up to. And then 
pick your target. Mirwin go. looking for another one. I mean, this turret is going to be gone. Mirwin's just going to walk on in. Maybe to auto him. Traps out the zone out. That's great. But over. Super. Hold these through the Weaver's Wall as well. Mirwin now flashes on in. A gold card. No, a red one. Once the AoE, his video has to space it out. Glacial Prison missed on the side. And Hilly's going to die again. When your year hangs in the balance, Hilly, you can't be doing this. You can't be giving resets over because El Yoya will take it as he gets a smite under turret, almost fine video at the end of the day. But Vitality are crumbling and MDK are trying to give him as much as humanly possible. Proof the range. He's got RFC Betty, so he can actually dispute some of it. But there's the dragon. Bounties available as well. Vitality. Oh my god, ball. Alvaro does it again. The Magnus Storm is there. The Shattering Strike. The Weaver's Wall zones them off. Vitality walking into the Lion's Wait. Den. Can't Ewan he? gets on the other side of it. Super reignites on the right side too. Lintus left alone. And Vitality have to watch him out. You're looking at Kazi. You can try and carry the fight. But as he spaces out, his whole team has burnt to crisp. Mirwin with the RSC. The cleanse comes through. But Kazi needs to get out of there. Or oh, Mad will just take them. For Freeze! Kazi drops yet another. Vitality are gone. It's gray screen as Mad continue to pounce. Mad Lions Koi continue to ride the summer. No wonder the fan base is so excited. As you said, it's been a rough split. They never thought they'd be in this position, but now against Vitality, who almost took out SK earlier on. They are struggling. They're going to teleport in, Betty, and but this third drag, and they put it on the line again. Hilly gets the dredge line in. It could set up Kazi, who gets excited. He's got range as well. You have to be careful, even though El Yoya gets a reset. They need to kill Kazi. He flushes in, he dredge lines in, he heartbreakers, and he's blowing the veins from the Aorta of Vitality's own. There's another reset. There's another ace. And Mad are on all fours, ready to roar into the playoffs again. That might just be it. All five members are down once more with a Baron buffed wave. 26 minutes in, MDK are looking to stop Vitality. Who knew that with such an abysmal split, Mad would be in tiebreakers, let alone take down Rogue, let alone go up against Vitality. And in 26 minutes, move into playoffs again. We were wrong, we admit. We doubted Mad this split, but no more, because they always find a way to make playoffs this year. An impressive game to round out the tiebreakers. From start to finish, it felt like the game was in their control. Pick after pick, they continued to find plays. El Yoya stepped up massively, 4-1 and 16. He was involved in the team's 22 kills yeah. 20 times. That's El Royal for you. I mean, when the man needed to have a carry performance.